I'm Edie Lush, executive editor, Hub Culture. Really pleased to be here at COP28 in the Future Mobility Hub with Caroline Choi. Welcome. How are you? Yes, great. Senior Vice President, Corporate Affairs, Edison International and Southern California Edison. Did yes, I get it right? I, you did. All right, nailed it. Right. So tell me a little bit about electricity in California. I'm from California. Tell me about your market yeah. and how fast we're seeing the transition to an all-electric mobility yeah. in California. Well, so Southern California Edison is in Southern California, mm -hmm. 50,000 square miles, 15 million residents in that area, very geographically diverse from desert to ocean, urban to rural. Um, very diverse in terms of the population that we serve as well, multiple mm -hmm. languages, multiple cultures, and very gung-ho on uh, an electric feature because we are an all-electric utility, so we mm -hmm. don't have any gas okay. delivery, and um, we are very invested in what we see as a pathway to 2030 and 2045, where California has, as you know, very ambitious mm -hmm. climate goals, and they are really predicated on 100% zero emission energy powering vehicles mm -hmm. and buildings, so mm -hmm. much more of the California economy. So the essential service that the utility provides today is going to become an even more essential part of people's lives in the future. And we recognize that it has to be more resilient, mm -hmm. uh, very reliable, and ready to serve all these new needs that are out there for mobility and for buildings. Talk to me about some of the challenges in mobility to start. I live in Europe now, in London. Charging points are hard yeah. uh, to find, so that's definitely one thing. The other thing that's hard is is still getting people interested and excited about electric yeah. vehicles. Tell me what how it looks in California. Yeah. So in California, we are leading the way in mm -hmm. electric vehicle adoption. So just this past quarter, 27% of new car sales were all electric hmm. vehicles, which is great to see. And so the new models that are available um, is certainly driving, I think, that vehicle adoption. We also have high gas prices, which are also um, driving some of that. Mm -hmm. But charge points are continuing to be a challenge. Now, in California, we actually have more charge points than gas today. Mm -hmm. But that said, um, a vast majority of them are level two charging, so um, right. too slow. We need about 10,000 fast chargers today. We're moving forward in a direction across the state to increase the number of fast chargers so it can help with that vehicle adoption. Mm -hmm. I'm actually the chair of a nonprofit called Velos, which is intent, its whole focus is to drive vehicle adoption of zero emission mobility. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that has done done it through advertising as well as education mm -hmm. around some of these barriers. And so we're, we're sort of all hands on deck in California to drive that adoption. And of course, we actually have a goal uh, and a mandate to eliminate internal combustion engines, new car sales by 2035. So that's a big driver wow. as well, is to move people forward in that direction. And also not just new, but in pre-owned vehicles. Mm -hmm. So California, our utility has a program to give $1,000 or $4,000 if they're income qualified mm -hmm. into uh, a pre-owned vehicle. And then, of course, leveraging the Inflation Reduction Act, federal mm -hmm. credit, mm -hmm. to do the same. And so it really helps to buy down the cost of an electric vehicle for people who have you know, income limitations. So when do you think we'll see in California no cars that are driven by oil the on the road? I think it could be a while. So even though we have new car sales mm -hmm. that, that ban uh, to being zero emission by 2035, you're going to have a lot of vehicles still on the road. Right. And that's California. And of course, we have borders. So people yeah. could go across and buy a <laughs> car and bring it in. Yeah. And so um, it could be a bit. But I think we are seeing the experience that people have in an electric vehicle, one that helps to drive adoption. They're mm. quiet. They're so fast. The mm. pickup in an electric vehicle is incredible, yeah. right? And so I think when people get in them, it's not about the environment necessarily. It's the experience that they have that really helps motivate them to get into an electric vehicle once they've experienced it. All right. Final question. We, you mentioned buildings as well. What's the biggest challenge uh, do you see with electricity in buildings from your perspective as a utility? Well, interestingly, where we were a decade ago with electric vehicles is I think where we are with buildings today. Hmm. And so people don't know what a heat pump is. They don't know that it's actually also an air conditioner because it's 
got heat in the name, right. and so there's a lot Maybe more education. Yes, around that. In fact, we're starting a new nonprofit in okay. California, focusing in on raising awareness by consumers in building electrification mm -hmm. and these technologies that they can purchase today and leveraging again the federal tax credits that are available to go all electric in their homes, particularly around heating and water. Mm -hmm. yeah. Caroline, thank you so much for stopping yeah, by, reminding me how California continues to lead the world. Have a great rest of the talk. Thank and you. And I'm Edie Lash. Thank you. Great to be here.